Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantasy team preview here on South Harmon. Uh, today we are going to be looking over the New York Jets. So obviously coach Robert Sala is still there. Offensive coordinator is still Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, thank God Aaron Rodgers is there to keep Hackett's job. Uh, key players who left, they didn't have very many who left on the offensive side of the ball other than Mekhi Becton, the big offensive tackle they drafted in the first round a couple years ago. Uh, some targets and vacated air yards. They're going to be missing 54 targets and only 261 air yards. So they're bringing back most of the same people um, that they had last year. So Koopa, go ahead and tell us about the quarterbacks here on the New York Jets. Everyone should know who Aaron Rodgers is. If you don't, you haven't been following the NFL in probably like 17 or 18 years now. Um, a, he's going to be their starter. Um Unfortunately, last year he got to play a grand total of four snaps and then he uh, went down towards Achilles and was out the rest of the year. Um, so hopefully he'll, because that was right at the beginning of the season, he'll be good, ready to go for this season. And the Achilles is not as bad for quarterbacks as it is, especially for running backs. Um, so we're looking to see him revive the quarter, the quarterback MVP of, of the entire league that he was in Green Bay. Um, they have the backup of Tyrod Taylor. He's been a perennial backup all throughout the league. He's been on so many different teams. I think the only difference between him and Ryan Fitzpatrick is that Ryan Fitzpatrick had the was kind of a curse on the starter in front of him, whereas Tyrod Taylor doesn't seem to have that. He has the curse of him getting stabbed in the chest. Um, so, uh, so he's probably going to be the backup there uh, uh, at, in New York. And then you have Jordan Travis, who is a 2024 fifth round pick. Um, Travis is one of those guys that for fantasy purposes, if he sees the field, you should be very interested. Um, D uh, Dave Brugler, he uh, talks about how he's a competitive and creative dual threat quarterback. Um, he has, but he has some sporadic elements to his game and the average size arm limit of his NFL upside. Um, they, they, so he's he's not quite as good in the arm talent, but he is much better in terms of that rushing, which kind of gives you a little bit of that Konami code that you're looking for at the quarterback position. Um, and so if he does end up seeing the field, he's somebody that you might see the, a little bit higher points than you were expecting, especially if Aaron Rodgers is more of an average middling quarterback. Um, he is getting old and so it, it, in terms of for fantasy projections, he's projected as quarterback 20. That's like a back-end quarterback two. You're hoping that he can be much better than that, but realistically, we don't know that that's going to happen with him. But if Jordan Travis ends up seeing the field, we could see him doing better than Aaron Rodgers was from a fantasy perspective as a, as a result. Yeah, uh, Jordan Travis was one of my favorite players in the draft. I know a lot of... Um you know, draft publications didn't like him as much as I did, but yeah, just that rushing upside, like he was like a Jaden Daniels light to me. Um, he could run for easily 500, 600 yards if he's a starting quarterback in the NFL at some point. So Jordan Travis is a guy I definitely will take some shots on in my rookie drafts, or if he falls to um, free agency after the draft, I'll go ahead and pick him up. Um, his PFF grade was an 87.8. He had 2,755 yards, 20 touchdowns, two picks, 63.7 completion percentage so that's one of his knocks on him is is his um accuracy a little bit he needs to improve on it for sure um the jets only kept two quarterbacks on their initial 53 man roster last year i think that could change this year i think it could be rogers taylor and jordan travis uh but it's definitely going to be rogers and taylor um at a minimum they also have Wee jarrett the 2024 udfa odd of west florida as well so um looking at the running backs now Brees hall obviously we know who he is super stud pff grade of 82.4 which was eighth of 59 last year. Uh, Izzy Abanacanda, 2023 fifth round pick, still there. Then they took two rookies this year, which was surprising. Braylon Allen in the fourth round, 2024 fourth round pick. Isaiah Davis in the fifth round. Uh, they still have uh, Xavier Valade, who is a 2023 UDFA darling. A lot of people like, but has just never stuck with any team. He's kind of bounced around. And Jocks Patrick, who's been around the league quite a bit as well. They kept four on their initial 53-man roster. 
roster last year, and I'm probably looking at the same thing again this year. I think Hall, Abanacanda, Allen, and Isaiah Davis will be um, on the roster, especially with you know where they drafted these guys, unless they completely uh, flame out here during the uh, you know rookie camps and, and all that. But I I doubt that with those guys. I really liked both of those players. Um, some highlights here on Braylon Allen from Brugler. Uh, overall, Allen isn't a overly creative and doesn't run with as much nastiness as his size suggests, but he is a well-built with vision, feet, and overall feet to maximize the run design. He has the talent and third-down potential to be a productive NFL tandem back, similar to a Tyler Algier. Um, 69.5% of his yardage came after contact in 2023. Uh, PFF grade is 74.9. He had 181 carries, 982 yards, 12 touchdowns, 28 catches, 30 targets, 131 yards. Was a totally different offense last year as Wisconsin, so that's why his numbers were down. If you look at his numbers the previous two years, he was uh, like a 1,200, 1,300-yard rushing back, one of the best in the nation every year. Uh, last year was a 73.5 um, in zones scheme and 78 in the gap scheme. One of the best pass blockers in the draft as well, so he can stick in there on third down. Um, didn't have as much uh, use in the pass game, but he has solid hands to at least be a dump off option. And then real quick on Isaiah Davis. Um, overall, Davis isn't a proven third down option, but he runs tough and balanced with feet uh, to pick through the defense on early downs. There is some Alexander Madison to his game, according to Dane, um, and his skill set should be uh, project well to special teams as well. Um, he led all FBS and FCS players with 54 carries of 10 plus yards or more in 2023. Obviously, that came at the FCS level, so a definitely a lower level competition. Uh, his PFF grade was a 94.9, uh, 236 carries, 1,578 yards, 18 touchdowns, 23 catches, 30 targets, 199 yards. He had a 91.1 zone grade, 94.5 gap grade, 936 yards after contact, which was eighth overall of, in all of college football, 80 missed tackles forced, which was fourth overall. So really good numbers. Obviously take them with a tiny bit of grain of salt because they were from the FCS level on a lot of those. Uh, but, man, he was a really, really interesting running back there last year. What did, what did you think about these running backs? Yeah, I mean, we know Brees Hall. He's currently ranked as running back two behind Christian McCaffrey um, If in terms of redraft. And so you're going to see him dominate most of the carries. You're probably going to see him dominate those catches out of the backfield that we've seen Aaron Rodgers and Nathaniel Hackett offenses do a lot in the past. Um What's going to be more interesting to see is what percent split does that look like behind him? Is it going to be Brees Hall and Braylon Allen is the one that's spelling him or Brees Hall and Isaiah Davis is the one spelling him? Or is it going to be a split even behind him? Um, so it, we, we know Brees Hall is going to dominate. He's going to be one of those running backs that you want to take in a redraft league with one of your first picks in a dynasty. He's going an early part of the second round in your startups. So he, he's absolutely the guy you want. The thing to watch here is just what does that Braylon Allen, Isaiah Davis, is he a, a Banacanda split look like? Where, how much do they trust these guys? And especially Aaron Rodgers is very much, it almost feels like he runs the, half the team with the, the way he gets to choose which guys are on the field, which guys are even getting contracts and stuff. I bet you if Aaron Rodgers likes one of these guys over the others, that's going to be the guy coming in to spell Brees Hall when he needs a breather. Yeah, and especially if Braylon Allen's one of the best pass protectors in this draft, if he proves that in camp and all that, and Aaron Rodgers sees that, it's going to probably be Braylon Allen a lot in there just because he can protect Aaron Rodgers. Um, looking at the wide receivers now, so Garrett Wilson's the number one here. PFF grade last year of 72.9, which was 43rd of 128. Obviously, he was playing with Zach Wilson last year, who is no longer with the team. Uh, they brought in Mike Williams from the Los Angeles Chargers this year on a uh, $15 million deal. Malachi Corley, who they drafted in the third round, 
Alan Lazard, Xavier Gibson, a 2023 UDFA standout who actually had some really big plays last year for the Jets. Jason Brownlee, another 2023 UDFA who did get some time at the end of last year, played really well. Malik Taylor is still there. Lance McCutcheon, who comes over from the Rams. Irvin Charles, Tyler Harrell, a 2024 UDFA. Um, he never really hit in college. He went to Alabama uh, two years ago and got injured and never really hit uh, his full stride. But if you've ever seen some Tyler Harrell um, highlights, this dude is like Tyreek Hill light. Like, I don't take that lightly, but he has the speed of like a Tyreek Hill uh, type player. So Tyler Harrell is definitely somebody I'm going to keep on my radar and deep leagues. If I start seeing some buzz on him with his speed, uh, Marcus Riley, another UDFA they had brought in. They kept seven wide receivers on their initial 53 man roster last year. They did keep Gibson and Brownlee because they didn't want to lose those guys. And I think it's going to kind of be a lot of the same this year. I think maybe six, I could see Wilson, Mike Williams, Corley, Lazard, Gibson, and Jason Brownlee being the six this year. Um, if they kept a seventh, it would probably be Malik Taylor, who they've had around for a couple years now. Um, quick highlights here on Malachi Corley. Overall, Corley needs to be more controlled in his breaks and tempo to consistently separate as a route runner, but he is dynamic with the ball in his hands. He has the speed, physicality, and contact balance ideal for a slot role that uses motions jet sweeps and quick screens his nfl comparison is somewhere between debo samuel and amari rogers which is a very wide spectrum um 91.6 um of his time was spent in the slot a large portion 75.7 percent of his catches um in 2023 came within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage and he wasn't asked to consistently create for himself before the catch he had 324 slot snaps 51 out wide snaps he had 79 catches on 115 targets 985 yards and 11 touchdowns uh 80.7 on his man coverage grade he dropped the ball six times so he's going to need to improve on not dropping the ball 8.6 with his yak which was tied for 18 that's one of his specialties is yak uh, 5.5 was his average de depth of target, which tied for 496 in the nation. So this guy was not getting the ball downfield very much. Uh, 8 for 261 yards on deep targets. 61 for 798 in the slot. He has a running back background, good contact balance, very strong hands. Obviously, with a 5.5 average depth of target, he did not have a very diverse route tree. So he struggles to get off press. Um, he's going to have to really develop his route tree in the NFL. What's your thoughts on the wide receivers here, Koopa? Yeah, so Garrett Wilson is somebody that we've been waiting for that absolute breakout smash year. It was supposed to be last year, and then because Aaron Rodgers wasn't the quarterback, we went back to Zach Wilson. He kind of got neutered a little bit. He ended up as, a, I think it was wide receiver 20 over the course of the season. Um, so a little bit disappointing, but with Aaron Rodgers there, we know Aaron Rodgers likes to pepper his number one target, and he's can elevate those receivers around him. He's... Uh, bringing Garrett Wilson up to wide receiver eight right now um, that could easily go higher. That could also easily flame out. And we, it, we see Garrett Wilson down in that back end wide receiver two range again. Um, so it's one of those things of watch out for, he, he's, he's kind of a volatile wide receiver that we think is going to do really well. Um, if he does not do really well, watch out for his dynasty value to plummet. Like right now, he's dynasty wide receiver like five or six or something like that. And so yeah. he could absolutely plummet in value if he does not have that breakout year this year. Um, Mike Williams is a good signing to bring in another weapon um, that's not Garrett Wilson, somebody that's competent. Um, the question is, can Mike Williams stay healthy? Because yeah. he's just had injury problems his whole career. Um, maybe it's the water uh, down in LA. Maybe uh, New York will help fix that. We'll find out. Um, getting getting Corley and Alan Lazard, it, it, those guys are probably going to be the guys on the field a little bit more. Um, Xavier Gibson and Jason Brownlee, when they were playing towards the end of the year, they looked decent. Um, Gibson especially, he looked really good coming out of the slot. He also spent the entire year as the kick returner and punt returner. So he's... Um, so we know that he's really good in space. 
It's just a matter of whether he fits the kind of receiver that Aaron Rodgers likes to throw to. As I mentioned earlier, Aaron Rodgers is definitely going to be driving what this offense looks like. And so if you're on Aaron Rodgers' good side, you're going to be on the field. You're probably going to get a lot of balls thrown to you. you it'll probably be good for fantasy. But you have to kind of suck up to Aaron Rodgers and be like, and get on his good side, get him to want you to out there on the field. I mean, that's the whole reason Alan Lazard's even on the team. So let's it, don't discount the, the power of Aaron Rodgers and what he likes or does not like. Yeah. And then quickly on the tight ends, uh, Tyler Conklin is still back. PFF grade is 65.5, which was 26 of 72 last year. Jeremy Ruckert, PFF grade of 57.5, 44 of 72 last year. Kenny Yaboa, a UDFA they've had for a couple years. Zach Kuntz, 2023 UDFA, and they brought in Lincoln Sefik, a 2024 UDFA. They kept four on the initial 53-man roster last year. I could see this probably being three with Conklin, Ruckert, and one of Yaboa or Kuntz, um, if Kuntz can, can develop this year. I think that's probably where we're going to be looking at with the Jets at the tight end spots. Um, I do like Conklin a lot. I think he's a very good tight end, too, if you're starting two tight ends in your fantasy leagues. And he doesn't have a whole lot of proven NFL players behind him. So I think Conklin is in a really good spot to be at least a very solid tight end, too, for you this year. Um, yeah, looking at, Oh, go ahead. I, I just wanted to say really quick, Tyler Conklin, for all those leagues where it's a hey, tight ends don't matter sort of thing. Conklin is one of those guys that I've just gone out. He's hit, A lot of teams don't have him on waivers anymore, but he's somebody that you can easily, if you're making a trade, you can just get him tossed in and the other manager's yeah. not going to blink. Yeah, I agree. All right, on to maybe the worst part of this team, and that is the offensive line. Last year, they ranked 31st out of 32. Uh, they had 13 different offensive linemen play at least 80 snaps last year. Um, while the offensive line looked promising on paper, injuries to Vera Tucker and Dwayne Brown crushed any glimmers of hope for this unit last year, which allowed a league-high 259 pressures last year. So not very good, but they did upgrade it quite a bit. They listened uh, to what they needed on this offensive line, and GM Joe Douglas went out and did that. So they brought in left tackle Tyron Smith, PFF grade of 83.7, fourth out of 81, longtime Dallas Cowboy. Uh, left tackle there. Obviously, he's older. He's dealt with his fair share of injuries, too, but they did ha bring him in um, as a starter here at left tackle. Olu Fushanu, the first-round pick, 11th overall this year. Uh, as of right now, he's projected as the backup at left tackle, but I wouldn't be surprised if um, maybe he moves into one of the guard spots just for this first year. Um, unless there's an injury to Tyron Smith, then he would kick back out the left tackle. Uh, some of the highlights on Fashanu, he's a work in progress as a run blocker, but above average in pass protection. Because of his body quickness, anchor versus power, and attention to detail, he projects as a long-term starting left tackle in the NFL with Pro Bowl upside. So very good pick there for the Jets. Uh, left guard John Simpson, who they brought over from Baltimore, two years, $12 million. He had a 56.3 PFF grade, which was 49th of 79 starters at guard last year. Uh, the backup is Xavier Newman. Uh, center was Joe Titman, a 2023 second round pick. He started for them all last year. PFF grade of 61.0, which was 22nd of 36 hoping that he can improve on that, especially with some better players around him. I think that should improve. Uh, the backup is Wes Schweitzer. Right guard, Elijah Vera Tucker, he's coming off an injury, so hopefully he's healthy. Their 2021 first-round pick. When he did play, uh, he had a PFF grade of 71.7. .7. Uh, his backup is Max Mitchell, a 2022 fourth-round pick. His PFF grade was a 49.3, which was 73rd of 81 at tackle last year. So he's a guy who can swing and play tackle and guard. Um, and then Mor Morgan Moses, who they brought back from Baltimore. Uh, Moses was there a couple years ago and was one of the really good bright spots in this team. Uh, they brought him back from Baltimore three years, 15 mil. His PFF grade was 80.4, which was 10th of 81 at tackle. So if they can get Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses um, on their bookends, they're playing really, really well. I think this is going to help this offensive line tremendously. Uh, the backup there is Carter Warren, a 2023 fourth-round pick. 
um, was not very good last year, obviously being thrown into the fire. And then um, you kind of touched on it earlier, Koopa, but I'll let you finish with the kicker, uh, kick returner and punt returner. Yeah, kick returner and punt returner last year were Xavier Gibson. He got basically all of them for both. Um, and I would not be surprised to see him do it again this year. Look for if he does end up getting that third wide receiver, like that slot role, those kick return and punt return yards, if your league has them, that can help bump him up into being like a viable weekly flex option for you or something like that. Absolutely. So, all right, that is it for the New York Jets, guys. And we will see you on the next one with the New England Patriots.